underwear hunts, a presidential dunce, and feckless stunts. Oh, and a live audience coming up today on The Point. Welcome to The Point, the only talk show bringing gay and straight men together to see what happens. And this is a very exciting episode because we are going live and long, which is just the way <laughs> Tito likes it. Um, <laughs> it is, believe it or not, it is our second season finale. This is... <laughs> this is episode 67. Wouldn't it be great if we had done two more? I know, yeah. We'll, we'll work on that over the summer. We're going to jump right into it right now. Talking point number one, trumped up charges. Okay, so if you've been following... You know, I wanted to start the show today with, you know, because it's Nuit Rose, it's a queer festival, gay and straight, blah, blah. But we just had to start here because there's been so much going on. And of course, we're in Toronto, right? So I hate saying his name... I actually, I won't say President Trump. I don't like that. You just did. You just, you just, you just yeah. did. You just did. <laughs> okay, I won't say it again. All right. Donald Trump. Okay, he's starting a trade war with Canada and the EU while praising the North Korean dictator. Um, in fact, one of, uh, one of Trump's people said there was a special place in hell for Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Sorry. Really? It's just a little extreme. It's extreme. I didn't yeah. hear about that part. Yeah, you, so yeah, yeah a special no. place in hell, in hell for Justin Trudeau. The and and part Trump, of hell. Uh, the latest yeah. news is that Trump says he will punish, quote, the people of Canada because of what Justin Trudeau said in that uh, now infamous news conference where Justin said, Justin, first yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> where JT. Justin Just said the bestie. he will JT. stand up for <laughs> Canada's interests if the tr Trump starts a trade war with Canada. Canada oh. will respond reciprocally. I'm assuming we all think, I don't know, what, I mean, okay. I, I didn't won't, hear I don't about this. What, what do you think about the way Donald Trump is handling, first of all, uh, Canada, second of all, all this other stuff? How, what, how do we respond? We as a people, how do we respond? We that's roll how, our That's eyes. how we respond. <laughs> uh, confused and, you know. Uh, <laughs> confounded looks at each other. It's, uh, no, it's pretty cray, honestly. I don't know, um, I don't know what, well, the, what the game plan is. Well, he's, but, uh, he's, like, it's impossible to react to him in a logical way because he's just not being logical. So it's basically like, you know, somebody yelling profanities at the corner and you figuring out, how do I deal with this? You, yeah. you can't, because it's just nonsense well, so, right okay, now. Okay, so uh, just this week, he had a, what he called an impromptu press conference which, of course, was planned because he didn't want yeah. people paying attention to the the. It was IG right report. after executive time. Yes, yeah. <laughs> watching Fox and Friends. Yeah. Um, but the, the press conference was, I mean, lie, untruth after untruth. How do you respond to somebody who perennially, perennially lies to you? I don't think you can. I mean, I think the problem here, especially with Donald Trump, is that nothing is ever going to affect him unless he's put in prison, unless he's broken a law and you know something ends up happening to him that way. He has too much money and too many people around him that'll let him get away with anything. So no matter what he does, none of these things, if he totally fucks up the economy, nothing is ever going to actually affect him. So he doesn't give a shit, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter to him. So he's not gonna think of anyone other than himself. And he's not a logical person, as Jim was saying. So there's really not a lot you can do with him directly. You have to try to go after the people around him, the legislators around him, and who actually are supposed to do the things so that aren't. Checks and balances. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So. What do you think uh, Trudeau, how do you think Trudeau should respond to that? I don't know. I mean, I, I, th I think it's the right thing that he's doing 
for now, but it's kind of unprecedented, well, really. Well, it's not really unprecedented. Well, I, I mean, Zaid, I'm curious because you're from the Middle East originally, yeah. and so you have a so bit have more of a global of experience. Perspective. With, share with us. I mean, clearly, I we don't have much I meant of an insight here. With the US you know, and dictators and demagogues Ooh. who have too much money, and it's, the solution's very easy. You just immigrate to Canada, and then you're like, oh, it's happening here too. <laughs> okay, not nervous. Everything's fine. Yeah, I don't know what the solution is. <clears throat> oh, okay. Did you <laughs> straight up? We're still figuring it out in the Middle yeah. East. Okay. Did you actually, did you, actually <laughs> Jim? I, I know that I know that your family is South Korean. I was obviously. wondering when you were going to come to me on this. Um, <laughs> but uh, from a South Korean perspective, how do you view the summit between Trump and Kim Jong Un? Do you want reunification of the Korean Peninsula? And here's the thing: is is the South Korean perspective is the same I, to Kim Jong Un? as the Canadian perspective is now to Donald Trump. And that you're dealing, like they're looking at that leader as somebody who's just crazy. So you're almost afraid of joining because you're worried about what Kim Jong-un will do. You don't know whose hands you're shaking. Right, yeah. and that's the whole thing. And there, there was like the, the big, you know, uh, handshaking between the North and South Korean uh, leaders. But they've done that before and nothing has ever come about from it. Trump saluted one of Kim Jong-un's generals yeah, of course Not he only did. that, did you see the other video where he's talking to somebody saying, like, when Kim Jong Un you know, says things, his people stand up and they pay attention. I want my people to do that. Right, yeah. yes. Praising like, a dictator right. yeah. and well, wishing the American people and, to and, act and, the way they do. And the other thing for is, him. is, like, it's been a while since I've been to Korea, but they're in a constant state of uh, readiness. So once a month, like, I remember last time I went, I was in Seoul, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, an air raid siren goes off. And then all the lights shut down. And I was freaking out. And then somebody told me, like, this is a regular thing. Like, we have to do drills like this oh, shit. every month. Oh, I didn't know that. And so wow. you imagine, like, Seoul is about the same size as New York City. So you imagine New York City air raid sirens and then all the lights shutting down and New York City going black. And that's something that they do every month to prepare for North Korea because they know that the North Korean ruler oh, wow. is just fucked in the head and would attack on a whim. Right. Well, it, well... Uh, it, how to deal with Trump? Actor know. Robert De Niro had an idea. <laughs> Fuck Trump. Mm -hmm. Of course, Robert no, De Niro, uh, <laughs> he gave his speech at uh, the Tony Awards, uh, introducing Bruce Springsteen. That was his response. He also apologized to the people of Canada for uh, what Donald Trump has been saying. Of course, Donald Trump's response was to call Robert De Niro brain damaged. <laughs> because of Raging Bull. Is, yes, he, he because went, of he too many boxing He had to go back to movies. Raging Bull, yeah. He did two, Punch I think, Punch drunk, was that what is, it was? Is yeah, that what yeah. he said? Is reacting like that helpful? And the reason why I ask is because... Well, whose reaction? Donald Trump? No, or, no, or? no the, the fuck Trump reaction. Is that helpful? Or does it just... I mean, I understand the anger, but is that helpful insofar as getting... Trump's supporters on your side. You're not going to No, of get course that. not. It's just going to make them even more against us as they've always have been because they think we're you know Canadians you mean? Oh no, no, I'm talking about reasonable um, people. People who are not <laughs> Democrats of just course. So yeah. This is what yeah. they expect from the Democrats for us to continuously um, belittle Trump and to tarnish his name. So this is just expected for them, I would say. Yeah. I, I think they're, we're, it's completely different games, and that's what the real problem is, is that the Trump supporters play by one set of rules, they play one game, and the Democrats are playing a completely different game that's not about whipping up the base and trying to get people out to vote so that they can actually make progress. It's, let's bring them onto our side, and let's do what's best for everyone. Like, yeah, that's a great world to live in, but that's not the game you're playing right now. That's the game yeah. you want to be playing in the future, but it's not what's happening in reality. And yeah, the go high, not low thing would be nice, but I don't think Sounds it's actually good, being work. effective. Well, so maybe <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe like, the response Michelle is Obama. just yeah. Yeah. to yeah. go high. It's the, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, that was, never mind. <laughs> Marijuana is going to be legal Great soon. Great yeah, dealing anyway. with things. Um, How does it feel, Fred? This is my, my panel joke all over again. Uh, yeah. Okay. And now I did another one. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Moving on. But before we move on. Everyone drink. Uh, um, I want to remind everybody one way that you can help the show that doesn't cost you anything is to subscribe to us on YouTube. So if you haven't done so already, please 
go to YouTube, youtube.com slash thepointguys, subscribe to our channel, and hit the little bell, too. That way you'll get notifications to know when a new show is up. Just like go. that. There you go. <laughs> Also, tonight's hashtags, the point live, hashtag the point live, and hashtag we rose to, they're up there if uh, maybe there's a plant in front of them. But uh, yeah, <laughs> if you're posting anything on, <laughs> on all the social medias, the Instagrams, the Facebooks, all of that, please use those. And Thank tag you. Us all. And uh, now that we've solved world peace, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Progress. peace for all now. We'll be mm-hmm. back right after this. We're back, and it's time for our second talking point of the evening. No labels. Okay. A new study shows that 25% of straight women Mm. and 12% of straight men who are currently attending college or university have same-sex hookups. They're straight, but they have same-sex hookups. So the question is, (laughs) are they really straight? You have to experiment until you know. That's a great question. Um, my opinion on this, and I'm, a str- I'm the straight one up. I'm the straight female up here, so <laughs> I have my own little lane. Um, if I was in college, which I was, by the way, when I was in college, and if I had a boyfriend while in college, and he also let me know that he was banging dudes, I would consider him gay. Is that wrong for me to uh, yeah. automatically think this? Yeah. That is so wrong. It yeah. is wrong. <laughs> yes. This is, I'm here to learn. It might be I'm more wrong for you to consider him your boyfriend yeah. if he's out banging dudes. But <laughs> if it's my man, oh, true, he's cheating that, as that well. Part. There's a bigger issue. There's yeah. a bigger issue here. But fine, a guy I'm into. Let's say it's a guy I'm into, and mm. he's having sex with men as well. Yeah, no. Fine, no, 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 no. Bi. Not that he's gay, but I would not think he's straight any longer. Am I wrong? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I would think he's. Bye. Bye. Or... Yeah. No, but like, what if you tried but it once and then he didn't still? like it? Yeah, like, well, if he like, tried, if he tried it once and well, never did it again. <laughs> well, here's he did it once. Okay, is it once? So it's not guys. You know, this is hypothetical, right? Like, this didn't actually happen, yeah. but yeah. he did it once. Okay, and he told me about it. Okay, did this really okay, happen? Okay, then if it's once as experimentation. <laughs> yes, could he still be considered straight? Yeah, if I think if you try it, of course. Of course, yes, you're experimenting. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank oh, you. actually, I didn't. Oh, yeah. for real. Actually, I, need to know I, I didn't. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Leah, but joining us on the panel now oh, is guest co host <laughs> and friend of the show, yeah. YouTuber <laughs> Adam <laughs> Carroll. <laughs> Just out of nowhere. What the? Also, Adam, if you could please speak in a higher pitched tone, that yeah, would be much sure. appreciated. I know, I know. He did it for you. You <laughs> asked for it in the Actually, got he's got also it. an author. That's and there's book. his book, that's Pawns of Blood and Thunder. Yeah, it's pretty great. Nice Adam, I'm going to treat you with more respect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to treat him with more respect. I didn't know you were an author. Yeah, yeah man. I'm, I'm still respect. waiting for my copy. Well, <laughs> that's, that's a bitch, buy it. still waiting for his 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. <Come> on. <laughs> so, so actually, researchers... Wait, um, I need to ask Leah, have you, did you kiss a girl in college? Ooh. And did you like it? And does that mean that you're a lesbian? My sister's in the audience. Um, <laughs> I don't think she cares. Now's hello. a great Stephanie. time for her to right find there. out. <laughs> Just letting y'all know. Yes, I have kissed a girl. And I didn't like it. Okay. Well, so, there you go. You okay, tried. so does that you make you a lesbian now? No. No, I don't know. There you go, T. <laughs> you put it right back on me. <laughs> yes. No, I don't consider myself a lesbian. Well, there you there go. You go. Okay. But, and Anything. also, isn't okay. it that? Isn't it what you consider yourself to be? Isn't it how you decide to label yeah. or not label yourself anyway? I don't know. <laughs> but also, is it just college? Well, is it? Well, this yes. is an interesting <laughs> question. Getting <laughs> mixed reviews from the audience. Well, this is, yeah, <laughs> because this is an interesting question because it's a matter of. I don't know what you, what you are versus how you identify. Or is what you identify what you are? And also, does any of it matter? I, I don't. I, in reality? I, yeah. By the way, it the question too. was kissing. I never had sex with a girl. It's great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you should. Tell me it's about wonderful. it. It's wonderful. Okay, so, so I, I hear. I so know. I hear. Speaking of performative bisexuality, um, singer Rita Ora. Queen uh, recently <laughs> got in trouble for her new single, <laughs> Girls. Yeah, of course. Girls. Uh, the lyric Girls. goes, sometimes I just want to kiss girls. Yep. And me too. it's so? much, to me, <laughs> okay. lyrically, it's like, we, we referenced Katy Perry. I kissed a girl and I liked it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nobody seemed to have a problem Demi with that. Demi Lovato. Um, Katy's cool awesome. Cool for the summer. 
uh, having about uh, being bisexual. But yeah, she but got in she trouble. is too. Like they're Demi likes girls too. But Rita Ora got Rita in trouble. Rita Ora is bisexual, okay? So, yeah. She's allowed to sing so this. But why did she right get now. in trouble then? <laughs> and why so did she feel... Wait, wait, Because okay. people okay. didn't okay. know that she was bisexual, so they come for her thinking that she's just making another song about kissing girls and yeah, catering to straight men. Yeah, but even if she men. wasn't bisexual, once again, ignorant Leah, but what's the problem with her just talking about her experience? Thank you. Who got well, her in you. trouble? Wait, wait, Who okay. came for her? Okay, Adam. Adam. Well, this, to me, this is why, like, right-wing people hate us is because we go after, like... That's not the only reason. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not even, just, not even just, not even just gay it's people. It's because it's we like, like people who hate... <laughs> dick. Dick. Yeah. It's because people, like, we go after such little stupid things. Like, oh, no, you need to apologize for that because you offended me. Like, yeah, this and yet wasn't we're allowed to say, you know, fuck this person, fuck that person, you know, cunt this cunt. We're allowed to say these things. Mm. I don't think it's really, it's not, sometimes it's not really fair. Well, I'm confused. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. What I'm trying he's, to say. He's performatively confused. <laughs> a little bit. We get upset and we, we need an apology. When I say we, I mean Democrats. Sure. The left need sure. an apology whenever we feel slightly offended. Mm -hmm. But we're allowed to say anything we want that could be deemed as offensive as well. Give me an example. I just did. Like the fuck <laughs> Trump. Sh sure. Right? Uh, nobody seems to disagree with that. Sure. But it is harsh. Yeah. Right? Sure. Um, I'm getting into another topic, which That's I okay. probably That's shouldn't. Okay. Go, for it. go for it. Roll with it. Go I don't it. know what this word means, but feckless, and I don't like this word, but cunt was used right. to describe Ivanka. Right. Do you see what I mean? Yes, but I also think, like, now if, you're gonna, <laughs> if you're going to compare, let's, let's compare the two. Let's compare, compare Roseanne to, uh, what's Sarah, Okay, we're, we're going to get, actually, we're going to get into yeah. this discussion later yeah, in my the bad. My bad. On I realized what I did I in the middle of what okay. I was saying. My, but I, I but, 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 why, I, what I don't understand is Katy Perry is not bisexual. She had a hit with, I kissed a girl and I liked it. That was a long time ago. Yeah, but people are going to say it's a long time ago. Yeah, but the climate was different back then. But it was a long time ago. Yeah. Well, if it was yeah. a long time ago, you would think, oh my God, it's so awful that she had a, you know, whatever, girl on girl, whatever. Mm. Fred. But now, it's cool. It's fine. So I don't understand why now it's a problem when it wasn't five years ago. Fred. People are... who, who, who is it that got her in trouble? Another celebrity came for her on Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Nope. So part Bonnie, of the problem, I think, that happens a lot... Part of the problem that happens a lot is that people um, seem to think that everyone deserves an equal voice and that every opinion is equally valid to every other opinion on something. And what I mean is three really loud, obnoxious people on Twitter do not represent the majority of people. Well, then why did she and have to happens. apologize? She didn't have to apologize. She did. She apologized. Because, because a celebrity came for her and like, well, was defending say, LGBTQ people. Well, why you? I'm bi. I'm proud of it. Well, that's what she Get said in her apology. She kind of did so say that. But then she shouldn't have to apologize. Yeah, but if people didn't thing. know, then she had to like put it out there. I understand PR, that she sweetie. officially came out, but why apologize? But the, I don't know. But the I song, know. But the song was you, about like, experimenting anyway, so she shouldn't have had to apologize to begin with. She shouldn't have to apologize. No, no, no. Right. Right. Good. Right. Good on Rita Ora. We're all the same yeah, age. Yeah, got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad we solved that. Again, I'm going <laughs> to remind you, uh, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to us on YouTube. Helps us greatly. Costs you nothing. Go to YouTube.com slash The Point Guys, and we'll be right back. Yay! Woo! What's next? Hello and welcome back. And now I want to uh, welcome, oh my God, one of my favorite people, a special guest here tonight. Fred, you're too kind. <laughs> Stop. Comedian, international, <laughs> spectacular, funny, one of the funniest people ever. Martha Chavez. Yeah. Thank you. Also, also in your intro, you forgot, uh, newly crowned Canadian Comedy Award winner, Martha yeah. Chavez. Whoa. There you go. Oh. Round of Yay. applause then. Yeah. Thank you. So what's new? <laughs> well, I want the, the, for the first time, they have the category of best stand-up comic in the Canadian Comedy Awards, both for male and female, before it was Best Female Stand-Up Comic. comic and oh, I and see. And I uh, won okay. it. And I also entertained the Prime Minister at the EGAL. 
Identity Gala on the 24th of May. Okay. Nice. I perform for uh, Justin Trudadi, <laughs> as they call it. Yes. Yeah. Is he as nice as he seems? Even nicer. Is he Even as good looking as it looks? I tell you, yeah, <laughs> ask, ask uh, my wife. It was, it was like, she was oh, like, true. pull yourself <laughs> together. Pull oh. yourself <laughs> together. Damn. No, he's very nice. You know that I, I, uh, I, I, to I told that joke in which, um, in which uh, it's, it's my usual joke that I said that I, uh, I did a locution le lessons, Peter Piper. I mean, uh, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. And then I said, That's the, who believes that? The rain in Spain falls mainly on the homeless. And Trudeau was Aww. laughing. <laughs> but he was laughing. How not Canadian. He was laughing. And he went, Aww. like, really? And I think I could see a glimpse of his perfect tears. You know, like a, a little glimpse of his perfect tears that he should be selling on eBay because I'm yeah. sure they cure arthritis. <laughs> I am yeah. sure. And then uh, I, uh, I did a joke in which I called uh, Trump, I called him uh, Mango Mussolini, Danny Three Wives, uh, the, Tas <laughs> the Tasmanian Devil on Crack, and Trudeau was laughing. Linda taped him laughing. And, <laughs> and uh, he was laughing, and then when I started talking about Trump and calling him those names, he was like this. <laughs> like he wanted to laugh, but I'm sure that now after the commentaries about Canada, he's with Sophie at night. Le mango Mussolini, <laughs> <laughs> let us menian devil and crack. You know, <laughs> so it was good. It was nice. Good, good. Well, we're glad to have you here. Thank you. Let's get into the talking point. A bee in her bonnet. Okay, so comedy comedians have really. You were talking about jokes about Trump. Yeah. A lot of satirists, comedians have been getting into some trouble. Yeah. Most, most notably, uh, a few weeks ago, Samantha B. Yeah. Uh, Leah, you referenced this a little while ago. Call, and you know something? Uh, d does everybody know what she called Ivanka Trump a feckless? Cunt. Does everybody know what the word feckless means? Because yeah. if so, please tell me. I, yeah, I no I'm not idea. really like clear on that either. <laughs> you do know? Yes. No. Oh, you uh, don't okay. know as well. Okay. I you were offering I don't know. Thanks for yeah. sharing. Yeah. Be ignorant. Like, no, no. Oh, like, I wish, man. I don't know what it means. Like, I don't no, know means. like someone, uh, if you have no backbone, if you don't stand up for Oh, things. spineless. You're feckless. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. But we must say why she called her that. Right. Yeah. Okay. This is, this Who the is, feck knew? <laughs> this, this is the... I mean, okay, Martha, explain. Then she called her that because uh, there, were the, there was the news that they are snatching little children of their parents' arms at the border. Which they are. And she... Ivanka criminal, I wouldn't have called her a cunt. I would have said yeah, a hard. con artist, a criminal, all of the other C other words. Other C words. <laughs> yeah. A conniving, Ivanka cunt. I would have said all of those things because she put a picture of, of her uh, in an embrace with her own child. So Samantha called her that, which, you know, it was oh. harsh. Mm -hmm. But she deserved it. Also, and she a, uses that word on her show all the time. All the time. She uses oh, that all the time. Like, like, it's really like, this not. This is just a case of people cherry-picking things with no context. And they blipped yeah. it. It's not that, it, that she actually said it. And not only, not only that, it's, uh, the, 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 quest, the thing is that all of these people are up in arms about freedom of speech when it comes about loving your guns and about speaking bad about minorities. But, when, but uh, what, something that a comedian says made them squirm. When the president himself gave instructions of how to grab women by the pussy on television, and he mm -hmm. said it was locker room talk. So you know it's totally a, a double standard because she was right. Ivanka Trump is a cunt, and <laughs> I'm. Not, that was a hard scene. And, and took the words right out of my mouth after your tirade about how you wouldn't have said it. No, no, I wouldn't have said. I wouldn't have said it in the, in my own TV show. That is a. Uh, Oh, but you're on the point now, so it's okay to say it's it. It's a I'm making this a This show can go down, no, you're, no you're problem. No, but I can say it because I have one, because that you... That <laughs> one. That's true. Yes, That's true. I can say it because I have one, because that, use have, that word is usually used. Any female genitalia is usually used to demean people. Mm -hmm. 
You're not I, like I, major I never understood uh, uh, using like dick and that word. I I don't even like saying that word. But I don't. I you never don't understood like the word dick. No, no, dick? the oh. c word. Oh, okay. I don't like it. I don't like <laughs> using oh, it. Yeah. I, but I don't understand why it's like like calling someone a dick. I'm like, well. Dicks are nice. <laughs> yeah. like, why are you saying about Dicks dick should be Jeez. even more insulting than can because even missiles are in the po- in the shapes of, of dicks. I have yet to see a monument like the Washington Monument that is a huge dick Phallic in object. the shape yeah. of a of a cunt, you know, like yeah. a nice conch shell where you can go <laughs> where you can go and listen music by Sarah McLachlan and Birkenstocks, you know what I mean? Do it. Yeah, nice. they should be like they should Sex be. in the City reruns. No, well, you know, like that, 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 that topic Horrible really show. like discombobulates me because mm. I am seeing it. They are coming for the people that criticize that administration and all totalitarian. I come from a, a country where there was a dictatorship. And you're from? From Nicaragua. And yeah, no, all, like all moment, totalitarian uh, regimes go after humorists. Like recently they fired a cartoonist by the name right. of Rob uh, Rogers uh, from the Penn, uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh uh, Post-Gazette. Yeah, yeah, Post-Gazette. We, we, he was the editorial cartoonist the, because of the cartoons about Trump. That only happens in regimes like the Soviet Union, yeah. like the former yeah, Soviet let me, Union, let, but what and she's all of talking that, about. yeah. Uh, uh, after 25 years as the editorial cartoonist for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, a man by the name of Rob Rogers was fired because he criticized Trump in his cartoons. Wait, this is in... America? Yeah. Oh. Um, this is in America. How it starts, guys. <laughs> Start applying for of those. Uh, <laughs> and a quick side note <laughs> on this whole like freedom of speech thing. When Trump tweets out that Sam B should be fired and all of these things as the president of the United States, that actually is an infringement on her on First Amendment freedom of rights. Speech. Because that is a, the government who is trying to punish you for what you are saying. Exactly. So there are lots of other I things just... where people get fired for what they say and do oh. on social media and things because they're, people, un, d- people don't remember that freedom of speech is freedom from the government, not freedom from consequences. Exactly. And it's, freedom it's about from governmental the government. persecution. Now, well, look what happened to Kathy Griffin, right? I mean, that was really harsh what she did, but she mm. lost a lot of business. She lost yeah. a lot really of endorsements. Really not that funny. I was just but like, yeah. okay. No, but, but, but she shouldn't have been, she shouldn't have been punished she, the way that she was. It was, yeah. she, it was too she, she did that because of the cover of Der Spiegel. In the cover of that magazine, uh, German magazine, they had a machete with a bloody head of Trump. Oh. It was tasteless, but Kathy was Griffin tasteless. is tasteless. But I am. <laughs> Not I am. Uh, Hashtag the point no, no, But I have... <laughs> I so have beat piñatas in the shape of Trump. What is the difference? That <laughs> she put the blood. It was tasteless, but it wasn't to be persecuted by the president of the United yeah. States. And as she said it herself, if she hadn't had any money, she wouldn't have been able how to survive because mm. the hurts of people Everything. that support Trump were changed. She had to hire Everything bodyguards for her, for her mother. For not only cancer, her, her life yeah. was in danger. I just want to know, when do we start calling it the Trump regime? I, I think I mean, any time think, I think we already have. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's no of, longer an administration. Uh, well, speaking of the Trump regime, I, I mean, her picture's up there too. Roseanne Barr, who some say is part oh. of the Trump regime. Um, oh. I mean, I don't know She's how much back. we want to even deal with her right now. But she got... She's on the She's other side of it and got wicked, wicked. Yeah, she I mean, got her fired. show is canceled. Yeah, but yeah, I, 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 I have an answer she had to that, that coming. too. I have an answer for that too. Roseanne, it's not a question that it was one tweet. She's been tweeting racist, conspiracy theory yes. things for years. Very racist. And Roseanne, when she was little, to her defense, Roseanne had a, a huge accident in which her brain was compromised and she's bad shit crazy. And well, then she should have her own show. No, right. for, for, new sure. information. No, I am even surprised. Like, kudos to her that she even managed to have a show with all of her problems. Well, and that's the thing. ABC yeah. knew what they were getting in bed with. <laughs> Ex- yeah. exa- exactly. But I think yeah. that she probably drove them insane on set, and they were looking for a they right. were looking for a little excuse to get rid of her. And, that's and my I, th- I do think mm, that. Yeah. I mean, uh, okay. So Samantha B was crass. 
but Roseanne Barr was racist. Yeah, like, it's a yeah, huge not the same not, thing. Like, it's yeah. not the same. No, no, no. And the no, president of ABC the is a yes. black woman. Oh, they are comparing. That's, that's, why, yeah. that's why the right wing went after Samantha B because the it Samantha B thing happened yeah. right after I'll Roseanne that, was canceled. Yeah. So the right wing went, well, Roseanne had to pay for her sins. Why not Samantha B? No, it's but, but, but it's, it's not... It's not the it's right comparable. should know. It's the right comparable. should know that no, telling no. it like it is it shouldn't get you fired. No, She's no, saying no. that Ivanka Trump is a feckless cunt because Ivanka Trump is a feckless well, cunt. Uh, a, this but is, she okay. was just being racist. You Those are t- totally different things. Uh, 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 Martha, you were talking about uh, the reason why um, Samantha Bee was so angry because of the issue of the Trump administration ripping children of refugees away from their parents mm. as they cross the, the southern border of the U.S. Yeah. This week, as we tape this, both Jeff Sessions, the Attorney General, and Sarah Hucka Sanders, uh, the press secretary. Fuck that woman. Um, so, I'll leave that to you. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. no. They you enjoy that. both <laughs> cited the Bible, saying and that's it was the line, biblical guys. No. that they do this. I, I'm going to tell you something. Donny Three Wives is a liar. And an adulterer. We know that because he's been married three times. The Bible condemns adultery. You, they have to stand to stone you to death. And lying, and he's a liar. Like you, you, we, are, we have separation of church and state. And to hear a guy with a southern, you know, with his southern accent to quote the Bible, laughing <laughs> that you have to separate. You just remember when they did it to, it's not the first time they do it. They did it to slaves. They did it when they in, interned prisoners of Jap- Japanese prisoners. They have the, your country sucks. I'm sorry to say your it, country. but your country I, I voted sucks. for Hillary. I swear, I voted for Hillary. And Fred, don't, uh, 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 let me know if I'm wrong here, but I think they asked if they could quote the specific st- scripture they were referring to in the Bible, and they couldn't? No, they did. Or they did? Yeah. They just did. Do you know what the scripture it, it, it is? It had Wait. to do with... It is biblical to, uh, to they, follow the to law. Follow the law. So to follow the no, law. But the irony oh, of that so is that this is not a law. What the Trump administration is doing no, no, no. right now with general. refugees and their children is not the law. It is a Trump administration policy, and it is a lie for Trump to go on the lawn of the White House after talking to his friends. Fox and friends to say this is the Democrats' fault, no. and the Democrats Which in is, Congress yeah. should they step up and do law. something about it. The Trump administration is actually separating Regime. the children, saying that we're going to bathe them. We're like taking your Holocaust. children to the showers, and then the kids are never returned to their parents. A, I'm sorry, as a, a Jew. Of, yeah. A friend of that, mine. A friend of mine. That's pretty bad. It, a friend of mine said it very beautifully. One would say it's very cunty. A friend of mine said it very earlier today. He said, "When people ask, you know, what what would you have done during World War II with the rise of the Nazis? Now you have your answer because this is what's happening. Like this is the same policies, the same things that are happening. So if you ever question what your response would be." What is your response? Exactly. Because that's what's, what's going on. Exactly. That's why I'm telling you that, that I am a little bit stressed and I haven't even yeah. been funny. Would well, you have given me that prize if you hear me talking in the show without knowing? No, but it's driving me insane to see the rise of the asshole. There are assholes <laughs> rising everywhere. We have our own asshole here now. Mr. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you on, know on, what Ontario. I mean? We are talking about Brand your new country. That's another, that's another word. It's like, why is asshole a bad thing? Um, <laughs> it has many functions. Please applaud Thank Martha you. Chavez. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the point guys, and we'll be back right after this. If I decide to run for office, you vote for me, bitches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that brings us to our next talking point. You equals you. And we have a couple of new people this evening joining the panel. First of all, I want to introduce indie pop artist Van Hector. Hello. Hello. Um, Who is uh, in from Montreal. He will be performing his new single later this evening. Um, And a surprise. As a surprise. And a surprise. And a surprise. surprise. For you, though. He's going to jump out of a cake. (laughs) 
Um, uh, but he's also joining the discussion uh, for part of tonight. But our special guest for this segment is pharmacist and activist and friend of the show, Michael Fanous. Yay! Thank you for having me. Can you take um, a look at my back after? Yeah. Sure, yeah, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong type of doctor, though. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> doctor of pharmacy. I have this um, rash. <laughs> one of, uh, now, you've been on the show a number of times. We've been talking about PrEP. Does everybody here, for, so that we have a baseline, does everybody here know what PrEP is? Is there anybody who does not know what There's PrEP someone is? There. No. someone okay. there. Why don't, why don't you give us a backgrounder on PrEP? Sure, absolutely. So, my specialty is HIV treatment. And HIV treatment, we are using one of the medications that we've been using to effectively treat the virus. We also give it to HIV negative people to prevent them from getting infected. And that's, that concept is fairly new to Canada. It's called pre-exposure prophylaxis, meaning before you're exposed to the virus, we can prevent it. Now, by the show of hands, you had one person who knew what it was, and you had one person who admitted to not knowing what it was. But the statistics are that gay men, who are at the highest risk of HIV, a great majority of them don't know about it, and uh, even those that do don't have access. So my job is specifically to help people access medication, so treatment and prevention. Yes. In Canada, this really? Yeah. I'm just in Canada. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. shocked now. So the I'm FDA surprised. was the first country to. Oh, the United States was the first country to approve pre-exposure prophylaxis. In 2012, the FDA approved a product called Truvada, which has two drugs in it: emtricitabine and tenofovir. I've been dispensing these drugs for my whole career in treatment of HIV, but in the States, they got, uh, they got on it earlier to prevent infections. And in 2016, just as recently as two years ago, Health Canada finally listened to all the evidence that we have, global studies all around the world that prove that when someone takes pre-exposure prophylaxis, someone taking PrEP will reduce the risk of HIV by 99%. <gasps> So, better than condoms. Yeah. We have a pill a day, just the same way girls take a pill a day to prevent pregnancy, we have a pill a day to prevent something that's been plaguing our community, the queer community, for 35 now, years. Actually, I have a question about that, because the, 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 the one person who said, I don't know what it is, uh, is, is a woman, and I, I'm gonna, a straight, you're straight? Yes, okay. I have had straight, after Michael has been on the show before, I have had straight women contact me and say, why is this marketed just to gay men? I had this one woman say to me, I've dated so many jerks. Why doesn't my doctor talk to me about protecting myself in this way? These so are great, great questions. I actually have straight women on PrEP in my practice. I have trans men, trans women, mostly gay men. Why gay men? Because gay men are at the highest risk. So if you're indigenous Canadian, you're at a higher risk of getting HIV. If you're Afro, Black Canadian, Caribbean Canadian, 30 times more likely to get HIV in your lifetime. An IV drug user, 70 times more likely. But gay men, men who have sex with men, are 131 times more likely to contract the virus than their heterosexual counterparts. We're at the highest risk. It's still an epidemic in our community, but we have effective tools. And do you guys know what the most effective way to prevent someone from getting HIV is? To treat someone with HIV. Not even PrEP. Someone who is on antiretroviral therapy, that's what we call it, ART or antiretrovirals, ARVs, they will not transmit the virus to their sexual partners if they're undetectable. And that brings me to the U equals U message, which is so important. And that's something that I'm so happy to promote. Just yesterday, we had the founder of the global movement of the U equals U movement. His name is Bruce Richmond, and he lives in New York City. He founded this movement because we've had the science for years. I've known the science. My colleagues who work in this field do. We know that guys taking treatment are not a risk to their sexual partners. So he went to his doctor after the condom broke with his boyfriend. And uh, he was worried and to ask his doctor, what's the risk? And his doctor said, you're undetectable. By the way, undetectable means that the amount of virus in the blood is so low that we can't detect it. So that's why we call it undetectable. Similar to someone, and you know what? 99% of us, when we reach 40, are going to have herpes. Okay? But it stays. Don't look at me. <laughs> we all have because I'm it. over 40. Well, no, I'm looking at everybody. We're all going to get this virus. You get chicken pox, you're, you're going to have a virus dormant in your system. But now we can make HIV practically dormant, right? It doesn't, we can't cure it, but we can make it undetectable. So undetectable people are not a risk. If you have sex with someone who's HIV positive, undetectable, it is not a risk to you to get HIV, even without the use of PrEP and without the use of condoms. That is phenomenal. Have all the sex you want. 
<laughs> well, well, that actually... Uh, I have a question. Oh, yes, please. What are the side effects of PrEP? So I'm going to get back to the U equals U message because that's of even better importance, and I'll come back to PrEP, and we'll talk about all the pharmacy stuff... No problem. ...at the end. So effective medications that we have, people that are taking treatment for HIV... Now that we know that they will live just as long as if they were HIV negative, we know they won't transmit to their partners, why isn't this message getting out? That's the problem, right? It's fear and it's stigma. Our community still faces a lot of stigma around HIV. Guys who are HIV positive and they come out to other sexual partners and let them know that they're HIV positive, they get rejected a lot online, on Grindr, or even in a bar. And why? Because the science does not back up the stigma. We know this. So to go back to Bruce's story, he went to his doctor, asked, what's the risk? And his doctor said, it's not a risk to your partner. He said, can you put it in writing? And his doctor was not really willing to put it in writing. He said, no, it's a liability. And a lot of organizations around the world said, we're not endorsing that message because, you know, what if one person did get HIV this way? So we did the math. We did the science. You'd have to have sex with someone who's HIV positive, undetectable, every week for 330 years before we'd find one transmission. So going back before the American Revolution. So why'd you look oh at God, me I again? We're well, talking about old yeah, people. Yeah. You keep looking at me. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at you as the host and my friend, but I want you to... <laughs> yeah. I, I want to see if you look shocked or surprised. <laughs> what are you worried but, about? But I think I've said this message so many sh times on this show that you know the people on The Point know it, but we want to use this as a platform, and we want to use this event, Pride, as a great platform to pro promote this message. And you know why we're picking this Pride, Pride 2018? Does everyone know what the theme of Pride 2018 is? No. Not, not mm, single person? No. The, no. the theme that they selected in Pride Toronto of this year is 35 years of AIDS activism, and that's why I'm happy to join oh, you guys wow. tonight. Oh, wow. Woo! Oh, we didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Now... This was interesting, and, and I wanted, uh, I was hoping you would, you would respond to this. So there was a study done uh, that was published in The Lancet uh, about... That's the medical journal, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it was based in Australia, but I think we can extrapolate to North America, uh, that since PrEP has become a thing, condom use is down. Yeah. Um, Condom course. use has been down even before PrEP okay, was a thing. Okay, well, according to this, uh, it dropped from 46... Well, this is interesting. Condom use among men who have sex with men. It was 46% in 2013. Like, you would think, oh, in 2013, before a lot of guys were on PrEP, it would be, like, really high. No, it's no, less than half. Was it was huge. 46%. It was like a trend almost. Um, and it uh, went down to 31% in 2017. Um, is it, because I still hear this, you know, sort of prep shaming um, and the stigma against people who are, who are um, undetectable. Um, how do you respond to people who say, well, but people aren't using condoms now? Well, I have a lot of responses. And first, it's the Public Health of Canada. So Public Health Canada, the agency, uh, has said that prep would create you know, a climate of comfort among gay men and straight people too, where they will abandon condoms. Well, guess what? My parents abandoned condoms and so did yours, right? Nobody's shaming them. Let's look at the rates of condom use. So condoms are not used by the majority of both gay and straight men. So we look at these reports from uh, Australia and we compare them to China, Ecuador, other Asian countries, North America, and we find that condom use is less than half if you go back to your sexual partners over the last year, I think everybody in the room will, s not everybody, but according to the statistics, more than half of you will admit to having condomless sex at least once. And if, does everyone want to admit that? No. All right. Yeah. Okay, at you least once. You got me. Yeah. No. Right, so now we want to know if condom use is on the decline, like this study in Australia is showing, well, are, we, are there other safer sex methods that work to prevent HIV? Well, yes, we talked about U equals U. PrEP works better than condoms. So are those on the increase? And that's my concern. My concern is that people enjoy condomless sex without investigating other safer sex methods that work even better. So this gives us greater need to get the message of U equals U out and PrEP. By the way, 93% of people on PrEP don't experience a single side effect. All right? And the Long most the no long-term side effects, all reversible. So if you discontinue the medication, everything goes back to normal. We would not put people on this medication if they had permanent side effects. But let's stay on the positive messages, which we have 
great tools to prevent HIV transmission. Right now in the pharmacy, meds expert where I am, we have the tools to end new HIV infections. And the big problem why it doesn't come out is because of access and awareness and all the stigma that we have in our and community. And I still hear people using the term, I mean, how, how, how do you, and I'm, I'm curious even people in the audience, how one, because we talk about safe sex. To me, I'm on prep. Me too. So I'm shocked. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Even if I, I want to be, but I can't afford it. And we're, we're, well, that's why we're here tonight. <laughs> that uh, um, are you? I'm. I'm. Let okay. me say something. Okay, go. Now, okay. I, I just want because this is. I, I understand and I agree Van's with you. Van's like and mind blown right now. Um, Taking notes. I'm just so. I'm not on prep. I'm thinking of going on it. I was afraid of side effects. I read, now I'm convinced. So I think, like, I think, you know, I, you, and I really agree with everything you're saying. However, does sex always have to be penetration? And, you know, when we had no, I remember in 95, 92, when we were scared shitless of it, 1990, we changed our practices. We wore condoms when necessary, but then sex changed. It wasn't always about penetration. And it was, I flourished that way, and it was still fun. Well, well, what's up? We have With a diverse community. And the great, <laughs> thing about, <laughs> the great thing about our diverse community is that we have diverse forms of sexuality. We have diverse forms of sex. And now we finally have diverse forms of safer sex practices. There's but no such thing as... now you're back to your prep thing. No, I'm not. Absolutely not. U equals U is not about prep. And I keep repeating that. Every time people bring me on to these shows, they want to talk about prep, prep, prep. And I'm telling you, we have the ability to stop new HIV transmissions by testing and treating those that are HIV positive. We can end an epidemic in our community. So the second thing you can add to that is prep. And far third, way behind both of them, is the effectiveness of condoms and anal sex. You're talking about anal sex, and I'm telling you, you can negotiate your safer sex practices with your partner. I, so no I one know. is saying that it has to be penetrative. And then let's also talk about what are the reasons why guys won't use a condom. Give me some examples. Comfort, of course. Not, not only. It feels better. Okay, that's also comfort and pleasure. What else? We talked Allergies. about on our last... Allergies to latex. Anything else? They have. They have non-latex. Non well, reasons why guys don't use condoms. Too far or across the room. They you don't can't. Get it. There you go. The it. number one reason. <laughs> Do you want to know what the number one drug, unfortunately, I, I'm here to talk about something like HIV, but the number one drug that I sell around this season is Viagra. Because condoms kill right. erections with a lot of guys. I hadn't thought of Constricts that. that. Yeah. Oh, Another yeah. thing is. Yeah. Well, I've never used Viagra. I don't need also, it Also, condoms break, right? Are condoms 100%? Do condoms ever slip off? So the thing is, there are rates of condom failure, and we've been studying them for years. Uh, if I had something, if condoms were the end-all, be-all of safer sex practices, I'd sit here and do the whole safer sex practice uh, message that you got in grade seven. But I'm here to tell you we have something that works better. And whether you want to use condoms or not, that's up to you. Whether you want to have penetrative sex or not, that's up to you. This is a negotiation with your sexual partners, but you know what else should be a negotiation? What other safer sex practices are out there? What else is in the toolbox? Are you undetectable? Are you on prep? Do you know about this? When was the last time you were tested? Do you know your status? Absolutely. It's not about do, what's your status anymore. It's about how recently do you know your status of. Um, so if you're undetectable as of recent, great. If you're on prep as of recent, great. There's no reason to shame guys anymore for, for any reason. It's a negotiation. Thank there you. There you go. So if people want more information about U equals U, where can they find that online? So everything can be found at medsexpert, M-E-D-S-E-X-P-E-R-T dot C-A, or medsexpert on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. But uh, I want you to also follow the hashtags of U equals U and find out more for yourselves about why this is important to spread this message in our community this year because of AIDS activism, guys. This is something we're commemorating, but we still have a lot of work to do. And my last note is, join me at the AIDS Walk in September when we demand better coverage for these medications from our governments. In some provinces, it's covered 100%, and it makes me sad to sit among other gay men who say to me, I would be on it if I could afford it, but I can't. So we have places to go. I'm not just going to bring pride to be celebratory. I think some of our political groups have taught us in the past that access and fairness isn't there yet in our community. We need to fight until we can all be safe and we can all have equal access to the tools that we need to have a healthier and stronger queer community. Thank Woo! you, Michael Fanous. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the point guys, and we will be right back. And now it's time for Tito's Midpoint. Yay! 
Yeah. 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 But before we do that, I want to welcome our guest co-host, friend of the show, and most fabulous, Fatality. Thank you. Hey. hey. Loving that pink hair, boo. That yeah. looks good. Faye is on point it's tonight. It's on point. Give me Nick yes. Minaj. So, Tito, what midpoint game are we playing today? Today we're playing on point because fashion gets people talking. <laughs> and it's, a, it's fashion from the Tony Awards that and, just happened. And how does this ago. work? You have a paddle, and it's either on point or off, and you tell me how you feel about the look. All right. This is from okay. the Tony Awards? You guys have lots of opinions about looks. And I want to, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's hear what you guys say. Let's see, okay, but go, let's get started. Yeah. All right, <laughs> so we have, first up, the host of the award show is Sarah Bareilles. On point. Oh. I think that's good. I would even do the one with Sarah Bareilles and, uh, yeah. and Josh oh, Groban oh, when they switched, they switched costumes from when Josh Groban was dressed as... Uh, as waitress, Jenna from Waitress, and she was dressed as his character from Natasha. I, I, I have to say, we're doing the Tony Awards. Doug, one of our straight guys, is the biggest musical theater queen. Yeah. It's true. I literally, okay, so, so here, just a quick side note. I spent the afternoon cleaning my apartment, and That's I was blasting normal. the... Hamilton. No, the Mean Girls soundtrack. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just about to say. To the new Mean That's Girls yeah. musical. There's a Mean Girls musical? Yeah, there yes. is, and yeah, it is awesome. It. I don't know nothing about musicals. It's, it's so on YouTube. Good. I downloaded it. I watched, I watched it already. It's, it's actually it's pretty good. It's great, so Faye check it out. wrote it as well, just like the movie. So it's She did the book, yeah, yeah, and her husband wrote the music, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay, it's great. And, who, and who's next, Tito? Next, we have Anna Wintour. Now, who uh, I know she's someone in the Edi fashion world. Editor in chief of Vogue magazine. Okay, I don't there like the go. yellow. So she no, yes, should yeah. be the say all be all. Like she should be telling us. But what's what, good. What, then what, she shows up wearing that. I like the haircut. But in this point, I think it's an off. I think it's yeah. an yeah. odd. Yeah. yeah. It's Audience, it's yeah. on good hair on though. Point. My Shout sister, it out. Yeah. who is a fashion fashionista. Yeah. Right. She says on. So you, you like it? I have to change my view. It's a look. Who says on it's point? I, say on I do like the good. I do like the haircut. Yeah, the haircut's like the haircut. very good. I like the haircut. Well, she'll never change that's that. Her but yeah, she'll never change the, that. The yellow, she, yellow is not her haircut is like yellow is not her color. Are we sure about? Better. I feel like I'm it not would be better. Sure that. Definitely. All Next right. we have Hamish Bowles. Oh. Bowles. Okay. Oh. I don't, who, first oh. of all, he is the European editor at large for the American edition of Vogue. It's too nice. He looks like the backdrop. Yeah, he's blending. He's in camouflage. Coming Hugh Hefner? Like, yeah, he exactly, do? right? Yes. He's trying to do a Hugh Hefner, but like over the top. Mm. He looks think? surprised that he's dressed the way he's dressed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he walked out in his bedroom <laughs> no, with yeah. exactly. He didn't even realize what was going on. I love it he because I want him as my rug. Oh, I just, I, I just <laughs> love it. That I, I understand. Just, yeah, I get that. He's fabulous. I, well, he's the backdrop, so I have to say the backdrop is really unappealing to begin with. What then to like flowers. wear They're the so backdrop no, no, no. is <laughs> not a good thing. <laughs> that backdrop is so nice. It's flowers. The backdrop is actually gorgeous if you're wearing a very plain dress. Yeah. But that's, yeah. it's just too much then for your like eyes. It should just be too like much. a plain white I can't backdrop. look at it anymore, Tito. Mm -hmm. All right, next we have <laughs> Canadian Tatiana Maslany. Oh, on point. Oh, She's oh, always on point for everyone. Very nice, very nice. Once again, ignorantly, who is she? She was on Orphan she Black. She was Orphan, Orphan Black. Black. Orphan Black, Orphan yeah. Black, okay. She also <laughs> was Aziz Ansari's Incredible love action. interest on I, And I like the, the, like the, 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 the design, the The detail. doctor oh, without borders doctor. Italy, she was the Italian. No, on Parks and Rec, different show. Yeah. Got it. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. She was Got it. it. Never mind. Next, we have Claire Danes and Hugh Dancy. Yes. Oh, both of them. That I've loved Claire Dane no. since I was like she looks 12 horrible. years old. What is she that? Looks, I'm looking no, she at looks, him only. Yeah, that same. He oh, looks handsome. Really like he looks handsome, yeah, yeah, yeah. but what is that? Is she, pre she's she's pregnant. pregnant? She's pregnant. She's okay, pregnant. but still. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She, she looks, looks a hell of a lot better, better than that. Yeah, what, what do you want? You would, Why are yeah. there two oh, frills? Pregnant. Is it one for the child and one for her? Like, yeah, there's yeah. what is going oh, I'm on? Dead. I don't know. She's just <laughs> like that part there. Just no. I don't, don't know. Like I don't it. know what that no. is. It's like okay. a clown costume. <laughs> I like it. If you're pregnant, you can't get upset. She's pregnant. She's giving. Yeah, but a Beyonce's pregnant. When Beyonce's pregnant, she looks fucking bad. No, Beyonce did not look good pregnant. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Oh. Next Do you we know have where we are? Catherine McPhee. Oh, that's oh, nice. She looks that's great. I like that. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. fabulous. Love fabulous. Catherine McPhee. See, doesn't that look cute. good with the backdrop? Yeah. That does look good for the right. She dressed for the back. Do yeah. these the people back okay? She has flowers on her dress too. Do, and do, they, uh, do they know what the, oh, Tito? Do they know what the backdrop is before they? Oh, girl, I don't know. 
Cause no, they don't. Because <laughs> she looks good with the black so. uh, with the backdrop. Yeah, yeah, with the black. Yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> they don't. As opposed to <laughs> that. Oh my God! Stop, my stop putting that still. in our face. My favorite <laughs> still. That's Sorry. gonna haunt me like Babadook. That is <laughs> Baba Shook. I wish awful. we had the Babadook. Man, you here. actually like that for real? Actually. I said I'd well, like said him as my rug. rug. Okay, okay. Oh, it's, just, I it's condescending. It. Actually, he looks like he's wearing a rug. Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. But that's See, what he's saying. Move in. <laughs> Next, Sexy. we have Kerry Washington. Yeah, that's, oh, that's very yes. elegant. Yes. yes. I like yes. it. Yes. What do you think, fashion woman? Oh, wait, hold on. Fashionista Fashion Stephanie, Stephanie. what do we say? Yes. What do you think? Steph you is not yeah. gonna trash carry. Stephanie says yes. Yeah, she yes. would never Switch. trash carry Washington. Yeah. I'm with Lee's sister on this. Good, look good on me. point. Holy shit, yeah, she it looks, looks so good. good. The, the backdrop. It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. Yes. All right, next we have a gay couple. Ooh. They're both, they, I think they met I on Broadway. I like that too. Oh. Michael Arden and Andy. I have a problem with the shoes. Yeah. Why? Okay, first, who are they? Why? I get that, the shoes. Yeah, the shoes aren't great, but the rest of it's Who are they? No, they are actors and they are. Are on uh, in musicals. They met. Oh. You see, okay. I, doing a musical together. I and just why okay. is he wearing a metallic kilt? Yeah. It's a look. Why not? I, That's a good question. And the yeah. shoes, are they meant to be pretty? No. They're meant to make a statement, I think. And he could have done better. Damn makes uh, a damn statement. He could have made you. a better statement then. The you think you're right. Maybe you're right. You know what? At least it's two nails a The statement is that the shoes are Are we supposed to see the toes or not? I like the blue suit. What? It, he's giving me mixed signals. Are we yeah. supposed to see the toes? I don't know. I think he couldn't find his it's shoes peek-a-boo. and decided yeah, to just wrap his feet in electrical tape before he left the house. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. And and <laughs> then again, I would I really like that. hate everything it's about it. It's no. He was on Smash. And can we talk about how great Smash was? It's a oh yes. Actually, no, we can't. Smash. Yes. Smash. Bombshell, the musical. Yes. Yes. Love that. What did he get? Oh my god, I can't. Okay, next. Next. It's it's not good. Next we have Tina Fey. Oh, oh, I like it. Very point. similar to Carrie Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar like to it. Carrie Washington. Yeah. A little flapper. But this is worse, but it's good. I think it's cute. Right? I think she looks adorable. Classy. She classy. Looks very good. It's very classy, like yeah. Tito just said. Very classy. Okay, next we have Tiffany Haddish. It okay. girl, it girl. I think that's now. good. Yeah. I do not like this. She should not have yeah. worn like. Okay, a, maybe, like a, belt. Haddish, maybe a belt. Can someone like a belt? A belt. A belt. Can like someone explain to me why she said that somebody bit Beyonce's because ear? Because somebody did, and she didn't up. say who did it. But she now did. she's saying who did yeah, it. Yeah, she did. Well, Beyonce is very upset that she said anything to begin with. Uh huh. Beyonce does not want her to speak on her at all. I'm sorry. If you're part of Beyonce's girl squad, why are you like? Talking smack in the way that she doesn't want you to talk. She's yeah. not. She problem. just met her the first time for that night. Exactly. She didn't know the decorum. She yeah. didn't know. You don't know. The, you, you don't, don't know like the decorum of bitching about someone. Come on. Exactly. I Speaking mean, of. Oh my God! <laughs> running to the paparazzi. Oh my God! Somebody bit Beyonce's ear. Like, okay, and wait, I'm not wait, gonna wait. tell you who. But Speaking you of. Told us that somebody yeah. bit Beyonce. I have so an announcement. It was Taylor oh. Swift. Oh, Beyonce and Jay released an album today, so I don't know why I'm here right now, but it just came out. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. Okay, right great. Now. Next. Dad. <laughs> That's no, your pop Peter of the week, isn't it? Something Next we have with. Rachel Bloom. Nope. Okay, what is... New, what? New, no. new, let, me, new. let me explain. Okay, okay. Tito Next. has an explanation. <laughs> She's wearing a t-shirt with the face of... Let me read this. Hold on. Broadway legend Stephen Sondheim. Sondheim. Okay. Sondheim. And there yeah, you go. Sodom is right. That's, it don't look good. <laughs> and <laughs> why, it, does she have like a heart and like the pulmonary system on her skirt? You I know thought what? it was a carrot. She's and what's that thing on her nipple? It was a carrot too. What's the thing on the nipple? I think it's a little hard. Dirt. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a peck on the it's nipple. Dirty. No, no, no. It's, it's, dirty. it's a cigar. I, <laughs> like it's the guy smoking and she that's had the a, end of a cigar. I actually yeah. think we she found had, an outfit <laughs> worse. Oh, no, worse than that. Uh, you, no, love, you no. love to go back you to You try to no tease way. me with that one all the time. <laughs> I know, he okay. loves it. I'm, I'm half on. erect. Just <laughs> oh my God. Quarter chub. Only okay. half? <laughs> Quarter chub. Tito. All right, last we have. Oh. oh. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Love it. Yes, 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 yes. Can I say their names? Matt uh. Boner. Jim Parsons. Wait, his name's really Boner? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bomber. 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 Okay. <laughs> Andrew Rannells and Zachary Quinto. Oh, oh yeah. They're all they amazing. How sweet. Awesome and How and the show that they're in? They're uh, like the male wait, Spice which, Girls. Yeah. Oh, they are. <laughs> are they they're, all gay? Is it, but, yeah, they're Jerry, all gay. But Jerry they're all gay. Yeah, they're, they're all gay. gay. I already recognized it. Fashionista Stephanie, yeah. what do we say about this? 
Yeah. yeah. Hey, actually, four thumbs, thumbs up. up. They look amazing. Eight thumbs up? I Eight, yeah, Eight. there you go. 27 thumbs up. Uh, let's just add but, but so Tito, one. Nobody asked me to do math. Tito, 12? they don't look as good as you. Thanks. Stroke his ego true. a little bit And more. thank you, Tito, for today's <laughs> midpoint. Yeah. Yay. Yay. And now it's time for our next talking point, lights, costume, action. And for this, we, this is very exciting. I told you we're here, part of Nuit Rose, the, the festival of queer art and performance. And we have actually with us one of those artists and performers, Charlena Russell. Thank you for having me. And Charlena, you are a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, multi multimedia artist. Um, what, what, what were you doing today? Um, I was performing my, um, I guess you could call it an art installation. Um, so I had uh, my violin, trumpet, loop pedal, ukulele, um, singing with vocal layers um, and layering it with uh, like beatboxing and different things like that. It's kind of jazzy, electronic type of music, um, wearing this sound-activated light suit, which I made with the wonderful Bernie Road. Yes, and, and uh, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, inventor? Yes. Bernie Road. Uh, you helped her with the suit. So what, 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 what is special about this suit? Uh, uh, well... Yeah, into the mic. Um, what's special is that we are from totally different planets, and we work together to create this thing, uh, it was is our first project, well, it's our first real making project together, and uh, it, it's like, we, we come from so different backgrounds in, 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 well, you name it, in generation, in gender, in uh, education and work history, and we we're able to combine skills, and Charlena designed the, the, the dress, the costume, and Bernie made the electronics, the circuit, and programming. So, so what is the? Actually, can you stand up for a second? Yeah, of course. Um, so, what, what, what is with the electronics? You can wow. talk to them. They go with oh, sound. It's for music, musical performance. It's a stage prop. Uh, it's based on something like this, and we can change colors. La 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 la. So it changed it, with the music. It goes with music or any sound. Oh. Sing us a song. La la la, da da, la la la, la, la. So it's it's like oh, in that's a dark really cool. room and wow. it's really cool. on a dark stage. Very cool. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. That is on point. <laughs> that is on point. Um, so you were also uh, filming a music video. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So part of the show, instead of having stage lights, because it needs to be dark so that the lights are effective, mm -hmm. um, this would look way cooler if we turn off all the lights. But um, we have video projections. I don't trust this crowd to turn no, off the yeah, lights. We'll, we'll keep them on. We'll keep them on. <laughs> but uh, I have a video projection that's projected onto me. Um, and it's kind of special because I thought up this, um, this suit while I was biking and camping and writing songs all over Iceland in 2016. I was there for 23 days and it was a goal of mine since I was 12 when I read a Bjork interview that she had done that. So I was like, I wanna do that. Um, so it, is, it is, actually, now that you yeah. say it, it is Bjorkish. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, so on that journey, I was traveling alone and had a lot of time to think about where I wanted to take my art. And I realized that singing a song doesn't you know, doesn't bring the audience fully into what I have going on in my head. So I wanted the video projections and I wanted, you know, and, and having responsive lights that, that are basic, like they're a living organism pretty much. This is like a plant growing out of my, my shoulder that's singing back and responding. And you guys get to see that. And it, even if you're deaf, you're going to get something out of the performance because you've got the video to look at. So to answer your question, um, I was filming today. I had three different GoPros and... Um, at the end of the performance, I asked, what is art to you? What is Nui Rose to you? And what is pride to you? And um, what I'm going to do is compilate uh, the video footage, and I'm going to make a little video out of it. So Wow. That's wonderful. Actually, those are interesting questions. How would you answer those questions? 
Well, um, art to me is, is self-expression. It is therapy. It is healing. Um, and it is inspiring. Um, it can be used as love or as a weapon. So it's really whatever you make it, which is why I love it so much. Um, Nui Rose to me is, uh, it's like finding my tribe for like one night. It's like queer artists and avant-garde and it's just, yeah, it's, uh, to me it's, it's, it is pride, very much so because it's even uh, more existential and uh, I think Nui Rose is very beautiful, so. And yeah. what is pride to you? Um, pride to me is not being afraid to be who you are. It's, um, it's coming together. And um, obviously there's still many, many differences with um, being someone in the queer community, so many different viewpoints, but it's bringing us all together and going, hey, we have this one thing in common. And then to me, pride is also uh, bringing our allies together because not yep. everyone at Pride is queer mm -hmm. or they're not even ready to come out yet. So it's, it's bringing really community together and um, it symbolizes acceptance for everything, regardless of your age, gender. Um, when the video is ready, where will people be able to see it? Um, they'll be able to see it on YouTube, on my website, charlina-russell.com. I'll be sharing it with the folks at Nui Rose, so it'll be all over the place. And if people are interested in your music, hearing some of it, where can they go? Um, iTunes, Spotify, you can go to my website and listen to all of my music for free, charlina-russell.com. And I'm on Instagram. So Great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, thank Charlina you. Russell and Burning Road. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash thepointguys. We'll be back right after this. And that brings us to our next talking point, spinning a yarn. Once again, we are at Nui Rose, a festival of queer art and performance, and we have another artist here at Nui Rose, Mikey Anderson. Yeah. 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 Hey guys. Yeah. Now you uh, you came in from Chicago Ooh. with yes. some of your art. Go Chicago. Actually, I want to know. I love Chicago. Chi Town. Chi Town. Uh, <laughs> Chicago pizza. That was Chi Town. I don't know. I just. Chi that's just <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, tell us, I have uh, some examples of your work up here. I know it's hanging at a, at a gallery um, oh, so nearby. Um, tell us about your, your work. Okay, so Adorbs. this is kind of weird being on a microphone, but I'm going to deal with it. You got this, you got this. So these are some of my embroidered pieces that I was doing. Um, so I'm also an art therapist. I'm starting to, studying to be an art therapist, so I was just finishing up an internship at a women's identified shelter. And so while I was working there, um, I started creating these embroideries, kind of taking on the secondary trauma of working with um, some of the homeless women. And I was specifically working with trans women um, and creating more spaces, more LGBTQ spaces in the shelter um, for the women. And so we would hold um, like knitting circles, sewing circles, which has its own history in like feminism and feminist sewing circles. Um, and so these two pieces are at Artscape Young Place right now. What um, um, what is an art therapist like? So like make this thing and forget your troubles. Like I don't, I genuinely <laughs> don't know what an art therapist is. Okay, so it's kind of like a therapist who uses art. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. No further explanation required. So like, Got it. I'd put a piece of paper out, and maybe you'd like draw something, and we'd talk about it. Or like when I was working with the women, um, they would embroider like pillows. And so what we would talk about is like the symbolism of the pillow, but actually then the pillows were something that they could use um, when they would go out onto the streets of Chicago, which are extremely harsh. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's like, cause within, when you're exposed to trauma, you don't always have words. And so that yeah. way art, helps to bring the trauma out in a nonverbal way. Um, that's like the smart-ish way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what was behind, like these two pieces, a lot of your pieces, I mean, they have this look, um, but what's, what's behind 
um, the art? Is it the experience at the, the shelter? I think it's both the experience of the shelter, also like being able to also engage in like self care. And so the pieces were also inspired by Keith Haring. Um, okay. And so that's where there are all these like kind of like funky little characters that are kind of breaking in half and they're touching also, dicks. Yeah, touching dicks. Yeah. <laughs> Dick Rainbow. Um, Hashtag Dick Rainbow. Rainbow. Hashtag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I if I was a detective during Pride, that would be my name. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Dick Rainbow. <laughs> that's so a great yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where some of those were coming from. This is like part of my my art therapy stuff, but I also make. They're also kind of inspired by toys that I make as well, and so. Which I love. I didn't know about these until I met you, and they're called Yarnies, right? Yeah. So I make. These guys. Oh my god. Oh my god. And oh my god. There's can I so buy many. all of them? I want one. And I'm currently making some queer puppets right now to do some work with LGBT youth. Are there a I'll... lot of straight puppets? Yeah, there are there are <laughs> a lot of straight puppets. Oh. But um and also like kids told me I was funnier when I had a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> um but Yarnies are they're my it's like my handmade business that I started like <coughs> seven years ago with, um, they initially started with Cynthia Raleigh, who's a fashion designer, and then it went on to being more of like um, my own little business. Cool. How many Yarnies have you made? Like thousands. Oh my God. <laughs> like so literal can we, thousands. Can we, can we just buy how these How long does it take you to like make a Yarnie? Story? It's like, how long does it take? Like a couple hours. Usually I'll so like 20 at a time and then cut 20 at a time and then have someone stuff them and then basically it's like a little assembly line of toy making within my apartment with my rabbit and roommate. <laughs> What's your favorite animal to make? Um, so far it's been a sloth and a unicorn. A sloth? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so cute. I like the pug. Yeah. The pug's very cute, I too. like the pug. I also do dog portraits, so if you ever need your dog turned into Shout a plushie. Shout out to my plushie. pug. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love that. Do, do people say to you, like, here's a picture, or do you meet the dog? And Yeah, and like, I just did one for, um, actually, it was a gay couple. They had, Lab like, a history of Labradors together, and Aww. so I made every single Labrador plus Labradors <laughs> plushies that look like this for all their friends and family. Aww. Oh, my God. That's adorable. <laughs> That's adorable. So if people want to buy one of your yarnies, yeah. order one, because you do... Me, you, for example. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> what is your website? Yarniesloveyou.com. Oh, okay. And it's L-U-V, not L-O-V. Of course it, of course it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> it could only be cuter if it was love. Yeah. <laughs> Yarnies love you. It's a, so, so great. It's, so that's great. right. It's, your website address is as adorable as you are. Aww. Aww. I'm oh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mikey Anderson. Yeah. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the point guys. And that brings us back for our next talking point, arrested movement. And to talk about arrested movement is internationally acclaimed photographer <laughs> Anthony Patrick Manieri. How are you? I'm just introducing him. Yeah. It's me. Yes. Uh, Anthony, you've been on the show before have, to talk yes. about your work, uh, particularly your <coughs> series called Arrested Movement. Yes. For those who don't know, what is Arrested Movement? How did this come about? <laughs> uh, it's a photo, it's a portrait series uh, with a, um, for, on positive body image for, um, and also initi uh, it's an awareness initiative as well for men. It's to include men in the narrative uh, of, pos of, body of body issues in the media, really. Because when it's discussed in the media, it's a woman's topic, which is fine, but I believe we all struggle from, it's a human issue, I believe, so it's, we all struggle from it. So I'm just trying to create dialogue and include that in the narrative, so. Yeah. So how did it, now, if I remember correctly, this was the first photograph you took in the series? Yes, that was shot in London, England. Where? And in London? London? England. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And you weren't expecting it to be a series, correct? No. So I was, I was there f working. 
Um, he was, an, old, he was a, an ex-dancer, so he was doing a lot of jumps, and I asked him, like, well, can you do that again? It kind of inspired me, and I said, can you take your clothes off and do that? And he do you know it. how many times I've tried that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm inspired. Well, take your clothes off. It's, uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah, sorry. Do it. It's, uh, it's a little different when you have a camera in your hand. Actually, people really listen to you when you I've have tried a camera that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Your phone camera doesn't count. <laughs> phone doesn't work. Doesn't right. count. IPhone doesn't camera count. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. <laughs> okay, fine. So uh, I, gave him the, I gave him the image and he posted it and it kind of went viral. So it kind of gave me an inkling that there was obviously some interest in this. And uh, when I came back to Toronto, I decided to do work on a, a portrait series with a, with a small little gallery show. And I put a call out for men to, to come out and 36 men came out and they were driving through snowstorms that day. And a lot of them, I would ask them, like, you know, why did you, why did you come today? You know, I asked if, if, uh, like five specific people to partake and I just needed another five people. So I was inundated with the amount of people who showed up. So um, they all had pretty much the same thing to say in the respect that, you know, this is an important topic. It's completely out of my box and it's, and it's gonna do good for people in the, in the environment, especially in the LGBT community, so. And it, what was fascinating to me when I discovered this, and, and I had told you this off camera, I first learned about, you're based in Toronto. Yes. But I first learned about you online uh, from a website based in the UK. Yes. I was like, how, how, do, I, how do we not know about, about you here? Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, no. <laughs> so so I, I reached out to you on, on Facebook. But it, what's fascinating to me is that this then grew from there and that you've gotten so much international attention. Yes about this and, and people are contacting you just... Well, as far as our, I've gotten a lot of organic press yeah. already, the, 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 this series isn't finished yet. Uh, I probably have about five or six more cities that I've initially wanted to go to. Um, and it, through social media, which I think is one of the biggest problems with body issues... Um, yeah, Tito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop looking all flawless and make everybody feel bad about themselves. Good times, good times. <laughs> Worst. Actually, no, it's not. It, no, the, the, uh, sorry to interrupt. The reason why I said Tito is because you always look at these like steroid bodies on Instagram and go, "Why don't I look like that?" And Some it's of like, them are not steroid. <laughs> I love how you're always like airing out See, Tito's laundry for everyone. <laughs> Tito, what happened to I that rash you had? Did you get this. that cream no. you ordered? No, no, uh, I, uh, no. We've talked about this before, and we've talked about this before on the show. It's this that the fact that social media, particularly Instagram, mm -hmm. yes. reinforces mm -hmm. this idea of perfection. Yeah. See, the thing is, though, I don't think that's perfection. I think that's more sexy than a muscle guy in six pack. No, I and I'm not, I'm not Yeah, that's the point of that specific picture. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not arguing. I'm saying that <clears throat> I, th I think a lot, I, I think why what your work, why your work is so important is because it, it takes bodies that we don't think of as, oh my God, he's so hot. Right. And yeah. eroticizes them in a way that, yeah, that's friggin' hot. Yeah. And the fat six pack steroid muscle, who cares? That's not what makes people sexy. Mm -hmm. That's what your work to me says. Mm -hmm. um, Thanks. I mean, Unless I'd I'm getting it. that wrong. No, it's great. I think yeah. he's hot too. I did. I'd hit it. I, I, <laughs> I totally hit it. But like I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not just for bigger guys, it's for, it's for everyone. No, for and in fact, I, I, I mean, here's another one of your photos. Um, you've had um, people reach out to you though and yes. have. And have um, emotional reactions. Yes. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that? So on set, I've had emotional reactions from people. They've approached me and uh, they wanted to thank me for doing this and have, including them. Uh, they, a few instances, one gentleman approached me and said, I want to let you know why I came today. Uh, he was dealing with some terminal uh, diseases and uh, recently diagnosed, I think, diabetic, and his body had changed with chemotherapy and things like that. And he said, I wanted, I, I came because this is a really important topic, and I also wanted there to be proof that I existed. Wow. So, um, having that said to me was, is, um, 
It was amazing, but it was a lot to take initially. It's the message that I want people to get from this, definitely, but to actually now have people say it to me on a constant basis. So I'm, I'm getting messages pretty much daily from people around the world thanking me uh, for creating this platform um, and sharing their stories with me. Well, if people are interested in taking a look at your work, contacting you, how do they do that? So they can find me at arrestedmovement.com. There's a new website uh, that should be out in the, hopefully in the next two or three weeks. I was hoping for Pride, but uh, oh, you can also find me on Instagram at Arrested Movement. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Photographer Anthony Patrick Manieri, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> And now it's time for our next talking point, a grand old flag. Oh, God. So. Okay, let's get into it. A designer in Oregon has come up with a new design for the rainbow flag. I don't really think it's new. I've seen it before. Well, Daniel Quasar is proposing a new progress-focused design for the rainbow flag. The design oh, puts white, pink, light blue, brown, and black stripes in an arrow on the left of the six striped rainbow flag. Each of those, they, um, uh, the, the light blue, pink, and white come from the transgender Trans flag. Mm -hmm. The brown and black stripes represent people of color, as well as those living with AIDS, those no longer living, and the stigma surrounding them, writes wow. Quasar. Mm. I have a question. But didn't all of those things... Uh, we have a lot of weren't questions. Weren't those all okay. included in the original rainbow questions. flag? Wasn't that the well, whole you're point? You're speaking on behalf of all of us, because that's exactly what I was going to ask. I, yeah, Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't it represent everybody? The also, rainbow. I thought it the was The rainbow just... flag. It's a rainbow. It's a spectrum prism yeah. of all colors. Doesn't Basically. that re Doesn't that mean everyone all... It's not as inclusive. I, 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 I mean, I would think so, but... I have a money question. So this person can I have some money? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where can I find it? Um, so this person's Kickstarter campaign yes. for uh, out of his eighteen thousand dollar goal has raised twenty six thousand dollars to create this flag. What? <laughs> I, 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 See, where do you get money? Make a flag. I guess. <laughs> is there any art? Like, does anybody yeah, have any? Yeah, where is this money going? Yeah. Like, what's it for? It gets expensive. Huh? It gets expensive. Well, the, the, I it's guess terrible. in order to create the flag. Okay, so it, it's mostly to produce nylon flags that are three feet wide and five feet long. So that's the thing. Oh, He's not just uh, like, oh, I shouldn't actually. I just said he. It notes they. in this article uh, on LGBTQ Nation that Daniel Quasar goes by the pronoun they. Z. Z. Um, so my apologies right. for saying mm. he. Mm. Uh, so I'm just going to say Quasar because um, that's easier. <laughs> and I won't screw it up. You're not going to offend nobody, so uh, go yeah. with that. And you don't um, want to offend him because isn't a Quasar the most powerful force in the universe? Oh yeah, something like that. Quasar yeah, that's does like sound a, like an a level. Ultra, so, like yeah. so ultra number it's one. Like a, it's, it's a celestial to, body. It's to... So the, the money is being raised in order to print and produce the flag and distribute it. The question being, is this something, I mean, why people would give money to it? I don't know. I don't no, know. I would give money to it. I just need to know. Because it's inclusive to like those specific groups. And they yeah, need maybe. To be yeah, like but they already have their own flags. Yeah, uh, Faye, you, you actually, uh, you, you addressed this on, on Facebook. Uh, what's your take on this? Well, no, because uh, originally I only saw the flag with just the brown and the black, and I'm like, why do you really need that? I mean, as a black gay person, I don't really care about, like, I, I mean, the whole brown and black thing was just to represent people of color. I get that, but the rainbow flag is the LGB, LGB. Also, is it not the ultimate color? Exactly. Like, Did you feel left color. out before, I, Faye? I don't know. What? Did you feel left out before? I didn't care. No, it wasn't. The, it I wasn't personally <laughs> like the flag because there's it's not a skin color. No, yeah, it's it's not a single like I've never met a purple, blue, green, yellow, exactly. olive, red Thank person. Thank you. Thank you. That you know what I mean? So it's not like no, no. Right. I was I like, not on that flag. And well, the rainbow flag just olive, gives you joy. But, I mean, like, it, adding the black and yeah. the brown just makes it like mess. I thought they had. I, I thought the whole point was that it didn't <laughs> have anything to do with race at all. It didn't represent any particular race. It was all the other. But that's that's the thing. Do sexuality and such. Yeah. Do LGBT, like I mean, Faye, obviously yeah. you fall into this category, but do LGBTQ people of color 
feel like they are left out of the rainbow flag. I feel like they feel left out of yes. everywhere else except the flag. No, I feel like they <laughs> totally do. That's why it's being invented. Well, let's invented find out. Or we should talk this... to somebody who actually is that. So, Faye? Oh, yeah. Excuse me. I mean, I don't, but I mean, I, I, there's probably tons of people in America who probably do, because they're probably just trying to get their own point out. But I mean, I don't. Uh-huh. Or is this a situation where it's sort of like the left is trying to pick at something that's not really a problem yeah, exactly. and not really be focusing energy on I the would bigger focus struggles more and on things that actually are exactly. like really important to the community. Like, like the racism within, within, the, racism racism within the LGBTQ yes. community. I hear about it, you know, um, I hear about it a lot. Oh, uh, completely. Yeah. From black and brown yeah. civilians mm. who are you know, transgendered or gay. Yeah, even they have issues with racism within it. With so even in the why community. Why don't we tackle yeah. those problems first? They, yeah. they did. They put it on a flag. Now it's solved. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's masking the Everybody actual pack issue. Everybody back up. Exactly. Point. Yeah. But it's causing awareness. That's the whole point. <laughs> For mm-hmm. example, Amazon mm. about a month ago started selling a straight pride oh. flag. First of all, this oh is oh my ugly. god. This is the most plain I, as, ugly as. let see. What's interesting this about like this in any way? On if this a isn't a representative of me, I don't want it. It don't look good. Hostess. Also, we don't need anything like straight. Uh, heterosexuals, I don't think we need anything yeah, to we're, represent we're doing us. All right. We're representing yeah. the world, to be we're honest. I don't think we need anything extra. Why are we competing with also, why the, is, the pride why is, flag? I don't why is think heterosexuality representing the world then? What do you mean by that? Say what? The majority of people are The majority. Yeah. What's the question? Heterosexuals are the majority of the world. Mm. Yeah. Or at least yeah. represent the representation. Statistically, it's is. true. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, the, the reviews <laughs> on Amazon after they started selling the flag from a company called 1000 Flags. Okay. Either that or Families First. It's got to be something about they, families. Uh, 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 online reviews were not favorable. Uh, one Twitter user said, straight pride is seemingly as beige as most straight people's personalities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No They're not wrong. That, that should be the flag. Cool. Beige. <laughs> well, Some people uh, like turkey burgers. But that is a beige ass, it's it's a beige boring like ass. It. The flag should be different colors of beige. Is this not a black? Is this a black no, and white photograph? No, 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 no it's not a black and white photograph. This is a bad screen. This is just like purple and stuff. Um, it was it was labeled homophobic. Uh, one one said uh, um, the irony of a straight pride flag being an eyeshadow palette. Dead. <laughs> I would buy that collection, to be honest. If Sephora and why does the straight pride flag look like a Sephora eyeshadow for beginners? <laughs> yes! Oh, my God. It it's like so Sephora. It's, it's the same like as, like, men's rights group. That, that's not a thing. Not Men a don't thing need men's rights. And they're running well, not the majority, world. but we've run yeah, the goddamn well, world for so long. This has come out so long. many times. We're, we're, we've had our chance. So whatever problems you have, and you'll probably cause them. Yes, exactly. You'll be happy to know... So that exciting. after all the outrage, Amazon pulled it, and they are Good. not no longer selling. Thank the you, Jeff Bezos. Is there a straight? Is there a straight pl- pride Yarny? Can is that a no? What is there a straight pride Yarny that I could get? Oh my god! What uh, is a Yarny? To they tried to do a straight pride a couple years. I think there's. That just sounds like the most try. awkward but why, walk okay, ever. But this what is. I, I just want yes, one more question on this. Why is it that there are? people, movements, whatever, that feel like they need straight pride. Because if we get something, they want something. Because they don't understand that they already have all of the things that the marginalized groups are fighting for and have been fighting for and, you know, have have been oppressed. Yeah. It's like white, yeah, white people not recognizing that they have these systemic advantages. And they only wanted it when gay people started having it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I went back to the 1820s. Actually, if I went back to the 18, it was not going to be like, oh, we were just yeah. celebrating Actually, straight pride 20 Saint minutes ago Patrick's while curing Day, typhus. When I see drunk straight people walking down the street wearing green funny hats, I think this is your straight pride. <laughs> Hashtag <Yeah>. basic. <laughs> really? Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the point. Guys, we'll be right back. All right. Bye. And now it's time for our next talking point, bottom-up pricing. Okay, so a New York City sex club, gay sex club, 
has a controversial, controversial pricing policy. It's $65 to enter if you're a bottom, but only $25 if you're a top. That's why I keep saying men are the worst. Oh. If you're a, a bit, top. A little bit. So it's cheaper for tops. They I'd let them in for free. They <laughs> I'm okay with it because I'm saving money. They, they, oh, I like how everybody's like, oh, that's good for me. Like, everybody just said that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, they say it's to ensure that the bottoms were starting to complain that there weren't enough tops to... So they weeded out the poor ones. They're always complaining about that. <laughs> yeah. So they made the price cheaper for tops to encourage more tops to attend. But there's more to this story, right? This is a special kind of sex club? Because I learn new words what, reading what that thing. Yes. What kind of special? Yeah, I was totally. just like, oh, what? Like, what, what kind of words did you not know? <laughs> uh. Well, I mean, the party is called Anonymous. It's a sex party for guys in Brooklyn. Um, you know, what, what ver, uh, I mean, what words? <laughs> Just reread the same thing. <laughs> have, you, have you ever had He's sex? Bottom, top? <laughs> That's when you... I'm kidding. Does Jim know what we're talking about? Yes, I do. Can no, because yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 the person who organized it or whatever explained that the logistics of the situation depend on this dif price differential. And the price differential enables certain practices to be practiced. Such as? Regular gay sex. Cum dumping. <laughs> cum dumping. Cum dumping? Cum dumping. You don't know what cum dumping is? I mean, it sounds like it's a self-explanatory word, but I'm pretty okay. sure it means okay. something else. So, what do you think it means? <laughs> no, what do you think it what? means? Hold on. I'm dumping of cum, I'm assuming. Into yes, but where do you think where, you're dumping you the cum? Yeah. Hence the logistical parts the host of the show should explain. <laughs> in order for us to make a fair judgment about this okay. price. Okay. <laughs> so... I'm only being okay. clear, Your Honor. I'm glad we are in the late night portion of the point. <laughs> Wait, why would anyone pay $65? Come dump. Okay. Well, some okay. are not. Some, not some, some are not as lucky as you. Come are. dumping. It's just too much. And for the mothers tell, and children. Tell me if I audience. get this wrong. Is when the bottom. <laughs> I like to take a ton of loads from a bunch of people. There. Yes. See, yeah, that there part, I didn't know that was a thing. There. He always takes so long yes. to get to the point. Yes. So how do they enforce the this? Get to the point. <laughs> this? <laughs> <laughs> First buzz. Go on. on. Go on. Yeah. Yes, Jim? Right. My question, how do they enforce this? So you can, yeah, like, like, what if you come to the door and be like, yeah, I'm totally a top. They follow you and, and make they sure follow you around. around. It shows Whoa, you. they have, bottom. They have yeah. little inspectors. You need to pay us they, $40 more. <laughs> like, yes. What if you're verse? What happens yeah, yeah. then? Yeah. Well, you ask. It says something about being like, verse. Like, I, I don't know. Is it obvious who's a top and who's oh, No, yes, because it people is. assume yeah. about no, me kidding. all the time. Yeah. Jim, Jim, uh, Jim. And the only reason I know about this is my brother and his partner, when they first got together, he complained to me when he came out to me. He's like, I've been with Brian for a while. The only problem is, is that we're both bottoms. And Aww. for the first little while, we just both had our asses up. And this is the opening <laughs> conversation with my brother about him coming out. And I was like, I guess we're pretty comfortable <laughs> okay. at this point. That's why so, I know what it is. <laughs> this <laughs> next story, I think, will mean something to Tito. Great. What it's got to be an orgy. I feel like Tito's yes. a gangbang yeah. story yeah. of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. Come dump. I mean, he did know what that was. Oh. <laughs> According to a survey Did by you let that slide? A, comp a company called Shorecell, which is a company that makes cell signal boosters. Okay. Why they do surveys, I don't know. But according to a survey they did about people's cell phone habits, 10% of people check their cell phone during sex. Yeah, I've done this. How is that I've even? I've definitely <laughs> done this. Oh, you've done that? Okay, okay. Done There's okay, the wait, 10% wait, 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 wait. right on the this. panel. Okay, and like, Adam. And like both times it was my mom, so. <laughs> wait, you were, you were having sex with your mom? No! <laughs> he said both Twice? times it was with his mom. Twice? You were having Come sex on. with your mom on the phone? Yes, definitely. That's how we do wait, it. Wait, so your mother called, you're having it, sex. Were you top or bottoming? How much did you pay? <laughs> 
paying no sixty five dollars. Yeah. So Somebody's paying happening. you sixty five dollars. I am cheap <laughs> AF. That's not going down. I feel like he was bottoming if he was on his phone. Okay, it's easier. Yeah, you need it's easier. Okay, okay, we need the story. Okay. We need the story. Okay, Adam. Okay, I was bottoming. I'm bottoming with my ex. I was bottoming, and um, my phone rang, and. <laughs> Did you just do I it? reached. <laughs> I reached for it. And then, thank you. And then, like during, and then I, and then like I, you didn't pause. He still went. He still kept going. Well, like, you, you didn't pick up the call. You just saw that it was your mom and put hey it, flipped it back over. Sure. Oh. oh. <laughs> Are you joking? That's. I answered the phone. Yeah. Oh there you go. <laughs> and and what did your mother want? Uh, like, how do you? Uh, I guess Mom, it wasn't very good. I, what? I, how does that go? <laughs> Just say you're on the treadmill. I'm on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way to get your parents not, to be proud. She's not going to believe I was on the treadmill. <laughs> um, no, like he, he, like, he, st- he stopped. He but paused. nothing, yeah. nothing kills, you know, a boner, yeah. like a call from your partner's mother. Talking to your mother. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, it was his mother? No, it was my mom. Oh, okay. oh my yeah, God. Yeah. Oh, it killed his mother. Get yeah. it together. Killed. Yeah. Well, I would be surprised. So it didn't go well. It wasn't, it wasn't great. She just wanted to know what time I would be home. And the other time? <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to... I don't understand. Okay, so it uh, if there. it's important, leave a message. And I'll, why, what made you answer the phone? It was there. It's if mechanical. It was ringing. If it was, it was ringing. If it, it was, was ringing, I, I would reach and like stop. But I would peek at who it is. I'd be like, who, who, who is calling? one thing? Huh? But that's checking, right? Well, that is no, checking. No, 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 if it's there, no. Well, checking, ask Shoresell no, how they no, conducted the study. No, checking is like playing words with friends while you're getting it up the ass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what are you checking with words with friends? Jeez. How did, while, while, we're t- while we're talking about surveys that for some reason people, people hey. survey... <laughs> um, people answer questions. People answer. Okay, so the website medium.com surveyed gay men about what kind of underwear they wear. Jock straps. Breeze. None. Jock, Jock, like Jock all straps. All the time? All the time. Oh I my love God. it. Ass out all the time. Really? Ass out, and I'm really? Such, and I'm wow. The drop and I don't happened. believe it. Show us. Show us. Show us. Show us. Show us. They got us yeah. going for the ratings. Oh my God. <laughs> Jock Whoa. Strap. There's a jock strap happening. Always prepared. Prepared. No, yeah, okay. Always okay. Prepared. And so, I'm such a top. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm, uh, he's only a top because it's cheaper. It yeah. is cheaper. <laughs> it's <can't laughs> to be a bottom. Dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so this actually surprised me. Um, 43%, the largest, uh, uh, was, uh, was briefs. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Briefs. Of G- course. Third, no, a 30. Like the, the ones that don't go down your thigh like briefs? 36% said no. boxer briefs. That's what I thought would be the, the most. No, they no, pinch no, your no, balls. No, no. It's so what? annoying. No they more pinch my balls briefs. all the time. How do boxer briefs? More brief? than yes. regular briefs? Yeah. Bri- really? No, briefs pinch your balls. Because of like the leg part no, no, and the cooch right. part and then it's just pinching. We like to be, we like to be supported and not just, it just sort of I need rides up on you. Boxer briefs are tight. but not too much. Not as much. briefs they're just briefs that have but yeah, like but not as much. short I mean, you get parts of it. That yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, don't people's thighs chafe? Is that? I don't know. <laughs> well, what do you wear? <laughs> it's like my boxer briefs. Boxer briefs. Yeah. I, most of yeah. Yeah. I wear boxer yeah. briefs. Eight percent boxers. They're not gay then. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nobody wears they're boxers. Really not. Some people. W- it's like some people free. wear boxers. Really? Yeah, like stri- gay guys wear boxers. Some like, gay guys. You know, anything is mask, possible. They're mask for mask men. On a boxer, brief, yeah. uh, boxer, to be honest. Uh, 7% wear jock straps. Thanks. Yay. Wow, I never knew that, that was an underwear Only choice. on weekends. Oh, I love it. I love it. I don't have an ass, so I need all the support I can get. <laughs> I mean, no, but jock straps <laughs> don't, don't, don't lift your... It's yeah, they do. They do. They do. They do. They do. I of believe. course they do. My they were invented in for this. Yeah. Actually, yeah. No, Without a jock they strap. They were not invented because of that. <laughs> flat AF. They were what if it's like really hot and, and you just have butt sweat? Like, what do you do? I know. It's butt sweat. But I would rather a jock strap that airs it out than have a puddle in my fucking ass from the underwear. Yeah, but then, but then no, like, no, no, like no. your okay. jeans are Briefs so. absorb, okay. and if okay. you don't have like a back panel, your okay. pants will absorb. I know. Yeah. I know. So, right? okay. So, you wash you your know. underwear after one wearing. Sure. Do you wash... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Laundry's expensive. Yes. 
Do you wash <laughs> your pants after one wearing? No. No. But if your bare ass is sweating on your pants, don't you need to wash your pants after every wearing? Why do I care? That doesn't yeah, affect right. me. I don't give a shit. I work from home. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it doesn't smell. Higher, Adam, higher. every episode that you're on makes me realize more and more why you're single. <laughs> <laughs> You're beautiful. It's so Don't true. listen to them. Thank you. Really. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the very first episode, you were complaining, I'm so single. I'm so and single. then now, I'm just like, after a full this season makes with sense. you, I'm like, oh, I get it. Yeah, while well, you're yeah, yeah. single. I get it. It's all the smelly pants. <laughs> Um, before before we go to our next block, I do want to mention uh, because Adam's been here all night that uh, oh. his his uh, he has his own YouTube channel. God, I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you've talked about oh, you're uh, famous. Uh, on, uh, go ahead. What's your YouTube channel? Oh, youtubecom slash Adam Carroll. <laughs> Sorry, what was That's the first part of that? YouTube.com. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you've <laughs> talked about your worst grinder message ever. Yeah. Uh, but you recently put out a new video mm -hmm. about <laughs> having uh, uh, somebody, you had a, a hookup, and the, <laughs> the person was not honest yeah. about something about oh. themselves. Yeah, okay, so this guy... That they would love you forever. <laughs> 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 Thanks. Yeah, really though. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, okay, so yeah, this this guy um, said he was like super experienced, like, <laughs> oh yeah, like I'm having sex like all the time. Though, but he's like, su yeah. said he was super <laughs> experienced. Like funny Can we people talk about how old he was time. first? Pardon? How old is he? Yeah. Sixty-three. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can be sixty-three and popping. Uh, no, he was um, nineteen. <laughs> um, <laughs> super experienced, nineteen-year-old. <laughs> super, super. Okay, I don't make good decisions. <laughs> um, uh, anyways, okay, so first, first and foremost, he, okay, he said he wasn't coming over, and then like three hours later, he messaged me, and he was like, hey, I'm like outside your place, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, uh, like, pardon? I know. I'm like, what? He's like, I just paid for parking. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, free after midnight. Yeah. Yeah. What? I was so confused. So he like, I was like, whatever, like, I'm, I'm kind of horny, horny, so like, whatever. So come upstairs, so he comes upstairs. And oh, okay. <sighs> so we start getting into it. We're getting into it. And he takes off his pants. Mm, yeah. And then, <laughs> and then so I go towards his ass. <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, sorry, I've heard this story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just remember. <laughs> okay, like so, like first and foremost, like it didn't smell great. <laughs> but like that's, that's because he was wearing a jock strap and didn't wash his pants. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes, go, go ahead. Okay, so, yeah, it didn't smell great. And then I was like, hey, like, it's, it's an ass. So, like, you know, like, whatever. It's just, it's just an ass. Like, that happens, so it's fine. So then, so then, so then I was, he was like, he goes, oh, I'm going to need you to, like, you know, stretch me out a little bit. And I'm like, okay, I was going to do that anyways. I'm a fucking gentleman, so, like, of course I'm going to do that. <laughs> Unless, unless I'm being like real like dumb daddy top and like stretch yourself out. I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, so then I took the two fingers, you know, licked them up a little bit, went inside, and I was like, hmm, I, I feel things. <laughs> things I can you're feel. You're not alone in there. And first thought in my head, like, yeah, it's an asshole. There's sometimes when you feel things and you're like, I want to. So I was like, well, I'm feeling like a lot of things. <laughs> There's a lot happening. And I was like, okay. So then I, I pulled out, <laughs> covered in shit. <laughs> covered in shit. <laughs> so then I was like, okay. So like, how do I, how do I handle the situation? How do I handle it? Hands. So he obviously, yeah, wa washing the hands. So then I, but I was like, how do I? What do I say to him? I can't just like run to the bathroom. Like, <laughs> oh, so then I, 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 I was like, okay, like you know, be nice about it, Adam. Be nice about it. So then I was like, uh, so like, dude, uh, <laughs> do you have to like shit or something? 
<laughs> what's like? Have you ever went to the bathroom? What, like, what's like? What's up? He was like, no, like I don't have to shit. Like, just keep going. It's fine. I'm like, no, I don't want to keep going. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to keep going at all. <laughs> so then you become him with the voice. It's great. <laughs> Thanks. Switch, just gotta yeah. switch it up. Uh, so then I, yeah, then I went to the bathroom and I like cleaned my hands. And then I came back and I was like, well, fuck, like, what do I do? Like, what do I do now? And I was like, I'm still kind of horny. You show him a couple of YouTube videos where you're supposed Sh- to do it. Uh, yeah. So then I, um, I just like lubed up his dick and I just sat on his dick. And then I just like rode it into town. And then um, he was like, oh, like you're versed? And I'm like, not really, but I'm horny. So like, let's just fucking do this. <laughs> so then. <That's> <laughs> something. <laughs> but it's like, and his like dick was like, his dick was like, small. So, like, I could, like, do it. I could do it. So I was just like, this is great. I can totally do it. Maybe you Sorry, this is turning into, like, an hour-long story. But I, so, like, Tell us so then, more. So then yeah, he, uh, he was, riveted. like, fucking me or whatever. And then he was like, oh, like, I'm going to come in your ass. I'm going to come in your ass. I'm like, okay, Diane, I don't fucking know you. You're not coming in my ass. That's not happening. So then I, like, I, I jizzed everywhere, all over his chest. And then he came on my ass. And then he left. He was like, okay, see you later. And then... Well, his parking was running out. His part, yeah, yeah, he you yeah. Know, had to... And it has been like, four minutes. It's been four minutes. <laughs> he had to, he had to return his car to mom. La- it didn't last. And then... <laughs> and then uh, so then... I was like... <laughs> <laughs> when his mom called. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's a good one. That's good. That's good. Um, so then... Yeah, so like a week later, I was on Grinder. And I was like horny. And Why so, else would you be on it? Uh, thank you. Exactly. Yeah. Why else would you be on it? Uh, so then I messaged him again because you know I'm really uh, I'm really smart. And I was like, hey, like, what's up? Like, what's going on? What's going on? And he was like, oh, like, not much. And he was like being really short with me. I'm like, oh, like, this isn't going anywhere. And so, but I was horny, so I'm like, I'm gonna push it anyways. So then. Um, uh, I was like, so like, you should like, you should come over, <laughs> like, cause you know that wasn't a really bar- embarrassing experience for you, <laughs> or anything. So then, he was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's really gonna happen again. And I'm like, oh, okay. So then I mess, I messaged back, and I was like, yeah, I totally understand, cause like that was like a really embarrassing situation for you. And then I blocked him, and I deleted Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Made you delete the app. So deleted terrible. It. Deleted everything. And then he wow. threw his phone into Lake Ontario. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah my hookup stories are great. And that's how go to my YouTube channel for more. And there's yeah, go to there's go more. to Adam's YouTube channel for more. Do it. What channel? His YouTube channel. What is this website people keep talking about? <laughs> so uh, go to youtubecom slash Carroll. Yes. Subscribe to that. Do and it. And then go to youtubecom slash guys. Subscribe to that. Do it. And uh, Fred, I think we have to give it a mug. We have to give out a mug. We do. Who do? I think the, the, I think the, the horizontal the, vagina. The Asian yeah. vagina. Yeah. That, was a, that think, was a good one. I think the winner yeah. is yeah. the Asian vagina. Yes. <laughs>
had cancer and lost my, at the same time was dumped by my best friend of 30 years. Oh my God. And it's totally fine now. And actually it's better, it's better off. But the, you know the, like the, the, the f hatred that you feel in the beginning? I decided to turn it into a farce. And so now I have, you know, it's like it's just a vengeance song. And then I have a girl singing in the back, a beautiful Vanette who's called Alison. And she say, she's saying in French exactly the opposite. You know, I'm saying, I'm, you know, I'm saying I will hurt you and I will make you feel very bad. And she's like, good riddance. I'm so happy since you've gone. And, you know, she's all liberated. Wow. And, she, and I think humor, yeah. Humor, humor will kind, kind of could save the world, I think. It saved me. I mean, it's just, wow. it turned, I turned my anger into a joke. Right. And now it's funny. Well, well it's funny to me. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not talk about it. Let's hear it. All right. With his brand new single, Yay. No Mercy, please welcome Van Hector. She looks very beautiful. <laughs> You're my new girlfriend. Chip, choo, choo, choo. Oh, we'll change, and so do we. Chip, choo, choo, choo. And we drift to anarchy, yeah. Do chip, choo. When out of love, us understand. Now my temper's out of hand, and I don't have much to say. Thank you. Thank you, man. No, I, I just met her on the street. <laughs> and I said, hey, you want to you give it a go? You want to do a show? I said yes. And she's like, yeah. yeah. Well, she said yes. Uh, can we get the rest of the cast up here? I want to thank everybody for coming out today to watch the second season finale, Pointacular Live, right here as part of New A Rose. <laughs> 
I want to thank the guests that we had on today. Michael Fanous, Martha Chavez, Mikey Anderson, Anthony Patrick Manieri, Charlena Russell, and Bernie Road. I want to I want to thank our special guest co-hosts. Leah Abraham. Uh, hey. Yes. Fatality. Yes. Yeah. Adam Carroll. Yeah. yeah. And of course, Tito Zay, Jim, Doug. And of course, Fred. Oh, me. Yeah, yeah. come on. It's your own moment. Yeah. Well, the best way to thank me would be to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com slash thepointguys. Helps us greatly. Costs you nothing. Of course, if you really want to help us, go to our crowdfunding site, Patreon, patreon.com slash thepointguys. We're also available on iTunes as an audio podcast. Check us out there. For everything The Point, you can go to thepointguys.net. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The Point Guys. Well, usually we say we have a new show every Tuesday, so we will see you next Tuesday. In a sense, we will, because over the summer we're going to be releasing little snippets, little back footage, behind the scenes footage from this live Pointacular. So you'll still be seeing us every Tuesday over the summer. This coming Tuesday, of course, is, you'll see this, for the people here, you'll see it on Tuesday. And then of course we'll be back in the fall, first week of October, for season three. Yay! Van, you said you had a little surprise for us? Yes, for you, actually, mostly. I'm, I'm, I'm doing Bizarre Love Triangle, but my version of it. For you, because oh, I know you like that song. I love that. I know, so there. Let's decide to cool. bring it Cool, okay. Yeah. Well, to sing us out, okay. once again. Am I going to say it you next week? Oh, we have to say it. Oh, yeah, we do. Thank you, Doug. But it's a whole time. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. We have a new show every Tuesday, so we will... See you next Tuesday on The Point. Here's Van. You could always stay now. Every time I think of you, I feel shot right through with a bolt of blue. It's no problem of mine, but it's a problem of mine. Living a life that I can't leave behind. Your sex and me. It's you, your sex, and me. The more you hurt me, the more I want to stay. Every time I see you falling, I get down on my knees and pray. Waiting for the final moment, you say the words that I can't say. Sex and me. It's you, your sex, and me. The more you hurt me, the more I want to stay. I feel bad and I feel good. I feel like I never should. Whenever I get this way, I just don't know what to say. Why can't we be until like we were yesterday? And me, it's you, your sex, and me. The more you hurt me, the more I want to stay. Every time I see you falling, I get down on my knees and pray. Waiting for the final moment, you say the words that I can't say. You'll control how weak I'll be I heard I long 
And I'm turned on the third person in the room It's my addiction to your gloom Could this be love? Could this be love? Could this be love? This can't be love Every time I see you falling, I get down on my knees and pray. Waiting for the final moment, you say the words that I can't say. Thank you, man. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to our number one fan, Eric, who came in for tonight. Have a great night. Have a great summer. See you next fall.